problems. We all have problems, we all go through struggles, hardships, hard times, etc. And it is our choice um, to decide whether we want to, you know, face these problems, confront these problems, and learn our lessons from them. Or just, you know, be pessimistic, be sad about what we're going through, and, you know, just live a sad life. So the problem that I chose to speak about today is get busy living or get busy dying. I interpret this prompt or quote to mean that we are in control of our lives. It is our choice. We have the choice to, to do whatever we want with our life. We can keep living life and get by it or we can choose to finally break out and take those chances that we've always dreamed about. We can go on and chase our dreams, um, work on our goals, do whatever we want, do what we are passionate about. Or um, we can just stop and, you know, not do anything and just sit home, do nothing, because we're, we don't want to do anything and just waste our time doing nothing. We have control and we can control our lives. We either um, use them uh, in a way that's going to benefit us or just waste them doing nothing because we're pessimistic, because we're sad that we have problems, because we are not ready uh, to confront these problems, to um, deal with these problems. Yes, it will, it will never be easy. It won't be easy. It is definitely hard, but you should, you should know that whatever struggle you're going through, whatever hardship you're going through, you will always find the solution. You will always get past that hardship, that hard time, and you will be happy again. I think that, yes, these problems are here to teach us lessons. And I think that the biggest lesson um, we can learn from these problems, or the lesson we can learn from these problems or struggles is joy. We have to be joyful. We have to be happy. You have to be optimistic. And um, we have to have hope. So I want to talk about someone that I think um, embodies the principle of this message in my eyes. And that is uh, Aruni, Ma Aruni Maseha. She is an Indian mountaineer and sportswoman. She was a national level volleyball player. Um, this woman was sadly first off, um, first off a moving train by robbers and she was left with multiple spinal cord fractures and a prosthetic leg. So she lost her leg due to an incident, to, due to, to due to an accident, and she didn't give up. She didn't decide to spend her time, her life dying. No, she got up. She had hope. She believed in herself, and she worked hard and hard and hard. She had dreams, and she decided to reach to 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 achieve them, and she was able to become the world's first female amputee to scale Mount Everest. Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount, um, Mount Aconcagua in South America. She was able to achieve great things. She was able to um, achieve her dreams. She, um, she confronted her problems. She confronted the struggles she went through. She had problems. She lost her leg. A lot of us, uh, I think that a lot of people uh, wouldn't have reacted the same way if they were to lose their leg or to get in an accident or etc but no she she faced the the struggle she confronted her problem and she was able to um to to reach her goal to achieve her dream so judges in the end i think that um we all have to we all have to uh spend our our life uh, that we have to get busy living and not get busy dying because if we get busy dying we're not going to achieve anything we're not going to do anything in life but we, but but, we, but if we spend life living doing what what we're passionate about and if we have hope if we believe in ourselves we're surely going to make it out we're surely going to be successful thank you okay Thank you very much. Judges, the speech time was four minutes and 38 seconds. Okay, next we're going to have Hajar. So, Hajar, I'll private message you your copy. Um, 
Okay, Kajar, you have two minutes of your question time. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, so Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen, um, extroverts, extroverted people. Extroverts are known as those um, loud, obnoxious individuals who are passionate, who have a fervor, and are constantly rejuvenated by being in social settings, at parties, by being the center of attention. This is perhaps the stereotypical characterization of an extrovert, but what really makes an extrovert? Now, such personality is much more complex and significant than just how they interact with society around them. One must also take into consideration um, the cognitive thought processes of these people, uh, how they interact with the world internally, how they, com how they communicate, whether they take in information or give it out. Now, um, an extrovert may be cognitively extroverted, but not socially so. And this is where Jungian psychology or Jungian typology comes in. In Jungian uh, typology or psychology, there are usually um, four functions, four cognitive functions. There is introverted thinking and its counterpart extroverted thinking. There is introverted intuition and its extroverted counterpart aka extroverted intuition. And there is introverted feeling, extroverted feeling, and there is introverted sensing, extroverted sensing. Now, when it comes to personality, the extroverted personality type, when one tries to characterize them and personify them, they're going to give them four letters. Um, e, N, T, P, E, N, T, J, E, S, F, B. Anyway, so the first letter, the E, this is usually what really makes you know that a person is an extrovert, quote unquote, because there is an E and there's also an I. So people who have an E are probably extroverts. People who have an I are probably introverts. However, it does not stop there because you can have an E in your four letter type, but still not be socially extroverted. Because the way that Jungian typology or Jungian psychology uh, assesses the person and the person's personality is through their cognitive and thought processes not through how they interact or you know communicate with the outside world so it's more about how they think you may be thinking like an introvert but you are an extrovert or you may be thinking like an extrovert and be an introvert i just want to give a personal example um i did this in the pre-final but i'm going to do it again um i'm technically an extrovert i am an entj which means that my four cognitive functions aka the four letters are e being uh extroverted thinking and being introverted intuition, um, T being uh, extroverted sensing, and finally J being introverted feeling. Now, as you can see, there is a lot of like introverted, you know, in the whole uh, typology situation of mine, but this does not mean that I am introverted. I am still extroverted socially. However, the way that I think and the way that I process information is introverted in nature which means that I take in information rather than give it out, if that makes sense. You can think of these people who take in information and those people who are always in their head, you know, people who really enjoy to think about things. Um, they are kind of thought people rather than action people. So the point of all this is that even though an extrovert may come across as a loud, social, sociable person, there is much, much more to their personality type. And the most significance is actually allocated to how they process the information that they are given. It's not really about how they interact with people and their friends. It's more about how they think. That's what really tells you if someone is an extrovert or an introvert, at least in the Jungian psychological sense. Thank you, Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen. I will start. I will start right now. So I am a person who talks a lot about 
literally anything that comes across my mind, anything I will experience, I will tell somebody, no matter who that person might be, just anybody I come across. So if I go somewhere, I'll tell you. If I meet somebody new, I will tell you. Not to brag or anything, but I am just a very talkative person, even my own dreams. And I have a lot of dreams. They're constantly changing, but I have a lot of dreams. And I will tell everybody about them. But then I noticed myself that all I did was dreaming and talking about my dreams and doing doing no proactive action, giving in, taking no initiative to make that dream come true. That is until I came across this really meaningful quote is that we don't want to tell our dreams, we want to show them. So what does this mean? What does this quote mean to my understanding? It means that talking about your dreams and whatever you want to achieve in the future will really make no progress in you achieving that dream. What we want to do is taking proactive actions, is leading initiative, is doing something about that dream so that somewhere in the future, everybody will see that that dream of mine came true and will not just keep hearing about me wanting to do this thing. So Mary Curie, the first woman to ever get two Nobel Prizes, didn't achieve her dream of going studying in a university in a country that stopped women from getting an education. She didn't become a chemist. She didn't become the only female professor in her, in her university by talking about her dreams, by telling everybody she might know, oh, one day I will become this. Oh, you know, one day I will get two Nobel Prizes. No, she sacrificed and she did so much. She she sacrificed so much and she did so much and she made actions to actually achieve that dream. And now her name is still in history. She didn't tell her dream. She showed us that she was capable of doing this. So simply telling somebody that you will do this is not enough, but showing them and tell it, and show, showing them that you are capable, that you have what it takes to be that person that achieved that dream. That is the real importance. Just telling about our dreams gives us a very bad habit, that of simply talking and thinking that talking will be the thing that will lead us to achieve this dream. Well, I believe that staying silent about your dream, and I believe that the people who are uh, who do do not who are quiet and do not talk about their dreams are the ones who make the most progress because they focus on themselves. They don't focus on telling the world that they are capable of this. No, they focus on themselves and what they can change in themselves to achieve that dream of theirs, to achieve what they want and what they have been dreaming of since a very long time. So what does this mean for me? This means for me that I will stop telling people about my dreams constantly because uh, it just gives me this habit of, thinking that if I tell my dream, somehow it will become true, which is completely false. What I want to do in the future is actually having the courage and having the resilience of staying quiet, but actually doing actions and taking initiative so that people might see one day that I am capable of this. And I think that if everybody did this, we would be in a much better place instead of big mouth that keep running their mouths about things they might do. We would have real action within our society and we would be living in a much better world overall with people actually showing what they're capable of and showing us that their name must lay, uh, must, must lay truly in history. So thank you.